building with Papa. Okay, this is the 7,000 square foot build out. Now that we've finished the control lines and benchmarks, now we review the plan. We start looking at all the details. It's going to tell us what size the walls are, how high we go, how we're to support them. You need to review this before you start your layout. Okay, once you've established that, now you run off your control lines, start doing your main runs, which would be your hallway, and then your other rooms. When you look at a plan and you're looking to see what the sizes are, these are usually finished measurements. So from stud to stud or track to track, whatever way you want to say it, you would have to add whatever the finish is so that the room comes out the size that's on the plan. Also, you have to look at the ceiling to find out what are the ceiling heights because you have to put in draft stops, which you saw the detail on the plan, and you know where they would run or how high the studs have to go. All right? Review all the notes. Get yourself very familiar, then start your layout. Okay, these are the control lines we set up. We know what our hallway needed to be, so we pulled off of this column to give us what we were looking for in this space. We we're able to pull that wall and run a control line all the way down to the other door. Then once we know that that line is what we're looking for and how we determined that was, we know these columns, we can't move them and they're in line with our hallway. So we ran a control line, measured back to the columns, found the column that was most into the hallway, and we used that for our line, and that's how we determined where we were gonna go with the hallway. Then we have an intersection that we ran a control line, squared off this control line, here so that when we do the layout we're able to pull back and everything that we lay out for these walls gets done off the control lines first so that everything lines up and is square okay we also transferred another control line over here because we have two sections and so we didn't have to pull as far we found another one we made a control line going here and then be able to pull everything off of it for our other walls because actually right here you see this blue line, that's gonna be the stage. So we pull from the front, we pull from the control line to the front of the stage, give us that. We pull from the control line to give us that part of the stage. That gives us square, and then we just ran a 45 for this angle. Okay, we've just about completed all the benchmark, completed all the benchmark now. Okay, when you're doing your layout, you need to know all your types of doors because you're going to need to understand how to rough them in. If you have a door that is 3-0 by 7-0 and it happens to have a frame which these are going to be knocked down jams so you would have to give yourself two inches wider so it would be 3-0 is 36 inches you would need to make the rough framing 
at 38 inches wide. And then seven foot tall is 84 inches. You would have to put the track up at 85 inches. That'll give you your rough opening so after the drywall's done, your knockdown jams will fit. You need to review all this while you're doing your layout. Use a square to give you the ends of the walls so that you can put your studs in nice and square and plumb. So you can get the openings correct. This is all very important. Read all your notes, get all this done so that you can get your framing started. First do your layout so you'll know where the walls go and then you start doing your exterior walls with your furring or what we're using, the 7 8 metal hi-hat. So you can run through without having to go in and out of the walls. So do that first after you finish your layout. Okay, once you identify where the doors are going, use your square. Put a line across it and then put an arrow showing that that's where the wall will stop. Make a square line so that you put your stud in nice and square. Okay, these are the metal hi-hats that we are installing on the exterior walls. As you can see, the hi-hats are in 16 inches on center. We run a top one at the ceiling height. Whatever that may be, this happens to be nine foot. Then we have the bottom one, and then we run eight footers in between, leaving a gap on the bottom so that you can run your electrical and everything else that's needed. Okay, now that all your hi-hat is up on the exterior walls, you've added the extra ones where the walls are going to end so you have a nailer for your drywall. Get this complete. And now you can start your framing. Start getting your track down. Let's go ahead so we can get this framing started. Okay, now we've started to put the track down on the lines. Okay. We started putting some track on the ceiling. We use a laser to get to the ceiling. All right, we got framing going up. As you can see, our deck height is much higher than our ceiling height. It's about 12 foot six. So we ran our bottom track and then we ran a top track right on the deck above. I used the taller studs, 12 foot six studs, and I put them in every four foot. That gives us the bracing on the wall. Then we put in the cat that holds the other stud, but it's called a draft stop. That draft stop will keep anything of smoke gets inside the wall, it won't go to the other side of the wall. Those are gonna be the ceiling heights. When you see double cats up there, one side of the wall is nine foot and the other side of the wall is 10 foot. This way it handles both sides of the walls for whatever ceiling height you're going to put in and you'll have something at the top to screw your drywall to. Okay. Through this coronavirus thing here, we've set up a station with san hand sanitizer, uh, thermometer, wipes. We're even running an air scrubber to keep the air nice and clean while the men are working. We have a good working, safe workplace, and everybody's enjoying working here. These are the headers where the folding partitions are going to be going. We're going to make these doors ourselves. I'll take you through that process, but this is our framing almost complete. We're moving forward 
we put up all the tall studs, then we fall back and we do some of the headers. We may have done some in the beginning, but we couldn't get the scaffolds in and out, so we elected not to continue that way, but I wanted to show you how we build the header. Okay, we cut the track longer than the opening, probably about six inches, you know, it's up to you. And so we cut the track and then we cut an ear on both sides. We can cut the first one without measuring. It could be about three inches, whatever. You snip the track, fold it over. Then we measure the opening and we cut the other side what the opening is. Once we cut that and we have the two ears on each side, you're able to install that so that you're able to put the cripples up. We have already used the laser, so we identified where the line is as we're putting this up. laser level so he knows that that's level that's the laser he set that up before Okay, the framing is nearly complete. Like, subscribe, and ring that bell. If you have any comments, I'd be glad to answer anything that you would like if you're interested in something. We're going to be going through this complete build out. I hope you enjoy each of these videos. I hope you watch them all the way through. We have a couple soffits we're gonna be building that I showed you before that we're going to be building these foldable doors. We're actually gonna build them ourselves here on site. These are the two headers. One is at 10 foot off the ground, the other one is at nine foot. Okay, please make a comment and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the next one.